I thought last Thursday we were inside here and the, you talked about organized chaos. It, it looks like people are adjusting and we're like you can one week to the next you can see progress in that regard. And I'm wondering if, if that's what your staff seeing too. Yeah, we want them to be able to catch up and be able to have, have the organized chaos look like it's organized. Right? We kind of for the last few weeks had just had chaos. You know, I, I don't know how organized it was in terms of our organized. To the players, it might be like, we're starting to get it. Now, today was the first time I, thought, I actually thought they looked organized within the chaos. Uh, we created a lot of situations today where the quarterbacks really had to handle the shot clock, play clock. They had to be able to look at that thing, and the next thing you know, they sprint out. It's at nine seconds watching our quarterbacks get everybody up to the line and play more of the situational stuff. We got a scrimmage on Saturday a little bit. Um, so we had to get ready for that with different situations. So um, we practiced a little bit longer than we usually do just because I wanted to get those situations with the green zone, tight green, backed up, coming out um, in the blue zone, normal play, nor normal play down a distance. But I thought they handled all that pretty well. Um, but we got to keep getting better. I mean, we, we, we can't get enough play it. We can't get enough uh, reps. We can't get enough of a lot of things. We got to continue to keep going at it. That's going to be the format come Saturday. You know, it's going to be interesting. I'll be honest with you, Andy. I think what we're going to do is we're going to have individual and then and then scrimmage for a while, uh, do more individual, scrimmage for a while. We have five linemen. So to be able to think we're going to run a 90-play scrimmage is almost impossible. We're not, I'm not going to do that to them, uh, nor would I want, I want. I want quality, not just quantity. So uh, we're going to do it very creatively. Uh, we'll find a way to be able to get the most out of it. Uh, but uh, we've, got, we've got to be pretty creative with it as well. Uh, I think that's kind of the format. Uh, I'd like the guys to be able to get, you know, at least 40 to 50 plays, which is, I'd like to get a lot more in a first scrimmage, but uh, right now we're kind of handcuffed in what we do. So uh, we just got to be able to adapt. Sure. How are you going to handle captains this year? Have you decided what you're going to do? Is it going to be game by game? Or yeah, I have a different or? philosophy on captains, to be honest with you. We have a leadership council that's full of 36 members. Uh, and then when we get to game day, I pick numerous captains. I think there's a uh, I think there's a lot of people on our team that deserve to be. The leadership council kind of takes over the leadership of the football team. But when we start getting the captains, uh, it just I kind of pick them of game week. So that's kind of how I've done it in the past, and uh, I've really enjoyed doing that because it gives people the ability and the uh, you know something to always shoot for, and not just these four guys. Um, just a philosophy that I have. So uh, all the guys can earn being a captain on our football team somehow, some way. But it's picked by me, and uh, I've kind of liked how I've done that. You mentioned the, you know, format for Saturday. Is the spring game going to be part of that same equation in a lot of ways? Yeah, it just depends. I'll be honest with you. We have five. We still have seven practices. Uh, so if we somehow get to four, it's going to be way different. Okay, it might just be an unbelievable, organized, chaotic practice that everybody gets to watch. Uh, I just don't know yet. But right now, as it stands, you know, we're going to scrimmage. Um, uh, it'll be a running clock. I definitely know that. It might be like a sped up running clock. You know, it might be like, you know, when you go to Madden and you're playing the video game and you pick like, do you want like a 15 minute game, an eight minute game or a four minute game? It just, you know, goes. So same thing with, uh, for us. Um, we'll see. But I do want some type of game feel. We might do the same thing that we're going to do Saturday. Do some indie, show some practice, scrimmage, do some more practice, show a scrimmage. Because um, I don't necessarily think the fans are sitting there watching like true situation of football. Like what he called when it was 2.09 on the clock. You know, going into halftime, I, I don't think they're into that. I think that everybody just wants to have an elite experience. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. You know, our players are going to sign autographs. We're going to be on the field after. It's just going to be an, an incredible atmosphere. So um, I'm excited about it. It's just we have to do it in a little bit of a different format. But right now, we're going to scrimmage and play a game. We've talked about the rushes in the past, rush ends. Um, you were with them in Indy today. What, anything particular you, you grabbed from them? Uh, no, I just want, I, I like to watch them work. You know, I, I think, you know, when you go over there and you got Devers and you got, you got Trenton Guthrie and you got, um, you know Carter Coughlin right now. I mean, um, that's not we're not very deep there, nor are we experienced there, right? So uh, I like to go. I love the way those guys work, um, you know. And so, you know, it wasn't just I, I went to every position, but to them, it's it's just you know seeing how they're working and, and uh, working on our techniques and making sure the techniques are exactly what we're looking for in that particular drill. And, and one particular technique is why I went down there because it's tough to teach. What are your early thoughts in the 2016 linebacker class? You've got Kamal, Thomas, and Carter getting a lot of reps with the ones. So you've only been working with them for six, seven practices. But what do you what do you think here early on? Yeah, I think that's one position we're pretty deep in. Uh, we're, we're maybe not be as most experienced, right? But we have some depth. And I think that's really, really key. You know, that's one of the positions that I sit there and go, okay, you can at least take a deep breath for a little while, then okay, I'll get to that one later, right? Let's get to these major, you know, this major crisis and these, 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 and these. Um, 
you know, it's kind of like when you're a medic and you're sitting there going, okay, this one, this one's okay, this one needs help, this one no way, you know, and so it's kind of what we're doing. I mean, that's kind of how we're dealing with the spring right now. When you look at the number of guys who had surgery, is there anybody who's iffy for the season or are they all, are you expecting all No, I expect all of them to be back. You know, some of them could be back towards the end of spring, but I'm going to probably hold them out just because I don't want them, their first experience to be the last two practices of spring ball. It's not worth it to me. Um, but they they have to be able to continue to do a ton in the summer. Summer's going to be incredibly important for this football team moving forward. Coney, is that one that might, I mean, it was ACL after the bowl game. No, no, they, trust me, Joe, they get back from ACLs faster than back in your day and my day. Uh, they come back a lot faster. So uh, he's right on track to be here by about training camp. How do you keep your frustrations down uh, when you're installing your place? It's new for everyone. Yeah, I, well, frustration, first of all, uh, we don't allow that to creep in, in the frustration. Now, there's there's uh, the inconsistency that'll bother you, right? But you've got to turn that into energy towards how we can get them better, how we can get them better in the classroom, how we can be, get them better out in the field. Uh, it's, it's about teaching. You know, we're all teachers. We're educators. Uh, but when you get frustrated and you're slamming things down and you're walking away, and the guys, you know, they read your body language just like you read their body language. They know that you are you didn't run the right route or didn't use the right technique, uh, or they're learning that they didn't. You know, because every day, remember, this is the seventh practice. It's a seventh new, in, seventh new install, brand new material today. They've never done our plays, never done what we've done down in the green zone, tight green, and some other areas. Uh, so again, they're learning. And once we go back through it again, after practice eight, we'll go back through everything again, uh, but we still haven't put everything in yet. And it's a process, you know, and you want to be able to let them have a chance to succeed while you're installing it. Can you explain bonsai? I uh, mean, we, a, can, we see it, so we can. Get what it, it is is it's really you got to get it off in 17 seconds. It's a it's it's an end of a half or end of a game where you have no timeouts and you need a field goal. Uh, we did it at the Kent State game. Uh, everywhere I've been, we at least ran it one time. You practice it every day, and maybe in the next four years we'll do it once. Uh, but it's one of those situations you have to be ready for. Uh, it, it's being able to run our field goal unit out with no timeouts. It's third down going to fourth down, or it could just be the last play of the half, and you know the clock's going to run. You call a run, and it's a long down and distance, but it's the ability to get a field goal off within 17 seconds. So uh, that's kind of how we run it and um, practice it an awful lot, which you see, because it's not a normal field goal. You know, you got to be set. You, it doesn't matter if you're an inch off your alignment or not. You got to be set because you got to get the ball off. Kickers can't take their steps. Holders, you know, everybody's just got to get out there, run, get set, because time uh, versus the play is everything. And you're the 1098 can be pretty fast or you slow it down. It depends how far. Because I got to make it somewhat realistic. If I call Bonsai and next thing you know, the D line or the O line is on this side, they got to go all the way down to like the, the plus 10 over there. I'm going to give them a little bit longer. And so there's a little bit of pause in between my numbers. Uh, but as we start to go and we work from the sideline, once we get a little bit later in spring ball or we start getting into training camp, you know, depending on where they are, where they're running from, I'll get it going a lot faster. So. I give him the benefit of the doubt a little bit. <laughs> Coach, how would you uh, evaluate quarterback play so far? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if much has changed right now, you know, in terms of our guys. I think everybody's working exceptionally hard. I think every day is a new, um, it's a new journey for them, but they've got to continue to embrace what they've learned to create their future. And I think that's what they're starting to do. They're starting to put the puzzle piece together. You know, it's not, when they kind of, I think the first four practices, they were just running plays to run plays. They're starting to connect the scheme. You know, the scheme's all intertwined and connected, right? And, and you know, one thing affects another thing. And I think they're starting to look at it holistically. They're starting to look at the, the whole picture instead of just, just my job. Not only that, but now they got to go lead. Now they gotta, now they got a head coach yelling in their ear to go talk to that guy in between plays because here's what I want you to tell them because we have to show leadership too. So they've got so much on their plate. Uh, I'm proud of all of them. Uh, they're working hard, but I wouldn't sit there and say there's a clear starter yet. You know, we, we've got a long way to go until I do that. But I love how they're performing. We've got some really highs. We've got some really lows. Uh, but again, we just got to continue to change our best and, and keep growing. You guys are doing coaching. Appreciate it. Roll the boats, Kyle Yamaha. Thank you.